Okay, today I want to show you, or I'm going to go through the steps, how to do textbook project three for PowerPoint. So, today's assignment, so the 12th, PowerPoint project, module three, textbook project. I guess what I should call this. We go in here and we start this. I do have two screens, so you'll see I'm going to take the instructions over to the other side, the book. Actually, I'm going to use the, the textbook, so I'm not going to worry about this pop-up, but blocked it. Anyway, I need to download this file and open it. Oh, since this is a textbook project, I'm going to have to name it what it says. So I'm going to go back in here and go to continue down here to grab this name and copy that name and then open my PowerPoint to save it with that name. So I'm going to save, browse, key drive, come down to assignments. CS110 and 108, Gerald Sampson. Got three of them in here. Maybe I'll put on Jerry. No, maybe I don't have that one in there. Okay, there it is. And then I'm going to make a new folder. I tend to do this. I do have a PowerPoint there, but I'm going to call it PowerPoint CH3 or M3 Module 3, whatever, just so I know it's PowerPoint 3, so I don't have to go hunt for it. And then I paste the name in here, and that's the name it has to be, and hit save. Now there's three pictures I'll need, but I already have them on the KCS110 data file, so we go ahead and start this. And so the first thing it tells me to do is to save the presentation as a CSPP sleep, but I totally ignore that because I did that. And we're going to delete a placeholder. So in this case, we're going to get rid of this title placeholder. And actually on my screen, the border of the placeholder to remove the title placeholder. And it tells me to click add chart here and I don't see an insert chart. So this, this, first one didn't even have what I want so it was a title and subtitle so they even gave me their own one so what I'm going to do is just go in here new slide and I need a content one is so this what they should have gave me on the start of the screen anyway I delete this and now I have content here to insert a chart so if you have to do that go into insert chart anyway when we click the insert chart icon which is this one right here then we can bring up charts and they want a 3d pie so I go in here and they want this 3d pie button here and we're going to click pie on the left pane, point to 3D chart to see a large preview of this. So it pops out like that. Anyway, once we check that out, we hit OK. So we have a chart now inserted into here. Now, it has the XL up above. And your screen may look a little different. The XL's floating there. Now we're going to go in here and just put some data in here. So in cell B1, click cell B1 here. And the section of B1 <laughs> even explains. We're going to type 5, sleep, stages okay and then it tells me to click a2 and here we're going to put stage one and then stage two now real fast what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy just the space and stage control c and now when i come down here and click on the excel i just hit control v control v control v and now I can go up and add the numbers behind them. So I click in that cell and type it too. Now I have to be careful. See, it deletes out my deal. If I'm not careful, if I don't get the insertion in there. What do I mean by that? Well, I paste in here. See how that insertion is blinking there? Now I can type it too. So when you click a cell, you have to double click to make sure you're in. Don't have the cell selected. By this, you should know this by now. And anyway, and then stage four. And make sure there's a space between the stage and the four. And then finally in cell A6. Now if you need to make this a little bigger, we can bring it down. Or we could just zoom down and then go to cell A6 and type RIM. So it's capital R-E-M and A6. Now, in cell B2, I'm going to take out this. So make sure I'm on B2. I'm going to type 5. And I'm hitting my enter key just to move down. And then in type 50 and B3, I'm using my numlock key, 5 and B4, and 15. And then finally, 25 and B6. So I have that in my Excel. What it does is it's actually changed my chart. So to enter to move the pointer into cell B7, and that's just to make sure that's entered in there. I can hit my Enter key either way. It's put in there. And what I'd see if I move this chart over, I want to make sure mine looks like the books. Now mine's a little different color. I'm not that concerned about the colors on it. They haven't told me what format to make this, so that's fine that I have the colors that I have. So now I need to bring this down and close Excel. Oh, I didn't want to close. I need to close Excel. Kick me clear out. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, all I want is this chart. 
Now, with the chart placeholder selected, so you have to have this selected to get these chart tools to even come up. If I don't have it selected, there's no chart tools up here. So we have to have this chart. We get format and design. They want me to go over this format one. Okay, so with the format one, click the shape height up arrow to repeatedly until 6.5 is displayed in the height. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click in there and type 6.5, hit my little enter key, and then click the shape width, and they want 10.5. It's 11 now, so 10.5. So now this is displayed in the box. With chart select, chart tools, format, tab, display. So I'm going to align it now. That's why I haven't moved this. Mine looks a little different than the old. So I want to click the line, and the line is up here at the top. And I want to make sure I align to center first. So I come down line to center and then go back into a line and align to middle. And that puts that dead center on my PowerPoint page. Slide. Well, I guess I should use prop terms. So now, click the line again, click line center, click line middle. So now we're on to change the chart type. So with the chart still selected, click the chart styles button. Chart styles happens to be this button right here. And that pops up over here, and they want me to go to style 5 as the desired deal. So when I look at this, there's 1, 2, 3, 4. If I go too far, so style 5 is the one that I want. Now, click the center of the pie chart to select it. So I want the inside, how they have little blue dots popped up. So I have all these inside selected, slicing handles around each side. Click the shape outline. So up here, there should be a shape outline tools display the shape outline category and then the desired outline happens to be this first choice right here I didn't see what that did or what that choice was I'll make sure I got pause my mouse there for a sec it should tell me so dark red and it says yeah I click dark red for red borders so what it did is put red borders and I don't see them until I click off of it now I'm gonna go back in here and change the weight so I want to come down to weight, and they want to two and a quarter points is the weight. Now I can see the red border outlines around it. So two and a quarter to increase the border around each slice to that width. Now click the chart title, the five sleep stages. So I go up here and click this. To select the text box, display the home tab and click the increase font size. So they want me to increase it. So they want me to use that big A, up A, little A, this the increase. So it went from 23.524. They want me to go to 32. Seriously, I just pull this down and go 32. If it was an odd number, I could do that and go up by, but yeah, as long as we get to 32, it isn't going to matter. Basically, they want Rockwell. So when I pull my font type down here, I'm going to type rock. And I should jump right down to Rockwell here at the bottom and make sure there might be other choices. So it is just straight Rockwell, so I'm fine. Now, I accidentally clicked on a deal over here. Be careful of that. You want to make sure you stay on South 5. In fact, I could close this box if I knew how to. I don't see a close button on it. So, oh, I click on this to close that box. So, yeah, if you want to get rid of this deal, make sure it's 5 still, the board around it. But anyway, we can close that. Don't need it anymore. Now, click one of the legends to select. So legends are down here at the bottom, and we just click one of them to select the legend box. And they want us to increase the font size on this. So I went up to 14. I want to go up to 18. So once again, I could just type 18. But anyway, and they want to change this to Rockwell. Once I pull this down, it should remember my last choice. So Rockwell will be in the recently used. And they want me to bold these down there at the bottom. So now they're bold. So Legend of Heart Rockwell. So at this point, I have did everything right. Mine looks just like theirs, except I noticed that mine is blue and green, yellow here, and theirs happens to be green. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go up here and save this. I'm not going to worry my colors. My size of my chart's right, and they haven't told me anywhere. I'm going to go back and make sure I didn't have me change theme colors or what I started out with. I might have missed a step. So when we do the placeholder, we first open it up. Power, power, oh, I'm supposed to apply the Wisp theme. That's why I've got different colors. So I need to go up here, and come into Design, and I need to pull Wisp down. So I need to pull this down and find W. And these are alphabetical. 
So I need to go clear down here at the bottom. Wisp will be towards S, W. Wisp is this one. So yeah, make sure you go design, pull this down, and change this to the Wisp theme. So I missed that. Now mine are the right colors. So luckily I cut that. Everything looks good. Now one thing I do notice when I put this in, I have two slides and I should only have one. So I'm going to click on this one and just delete this slide. So now this is my first slide. Mine looks just like theirs. So everything is perfect now. Save that. Now I'm going to click the new slide button. So I got to go to home, new slide button instead of the pull down menu. And instantly it just puts in a new slide. It'll remember the last choice I had. So I'm check, make sure. So now I want to, and that's, yeah, the pedal of contents what they had. So they want me to click the insert table icon in the content placeholder. So over here will be insert table. So I click that and then I choose how many columns and rows I want. And what do they say here? Looks like it is two by five. So just opposite of what I had. So they want two in here. And you can use the up arrow keys over here, but I'm just going to type them in. I highlight them. So it looks like it's a two by five, two columns, five rows. And then click OK. So now I have a table there. Now they want me to enter data in the table. So with the insertion point in the first cell, which it is blinking in there, I'm going to type age. It looks like they capitalized the first letter, but not the second. And then a 0 to 3 to the next cell. So I go straight down. I just hit the down arrow key. And I want 0 3 years. Or is this months? First one's months. And it's not capitalized. So 0 to 3. And I'm looking very close. Mine looks like theirs. Then it is 0 dash 1. And I'll tell you what, turn your numeric keypad on. Everything's so much easier over there. And this is 3 to 5, though, if you check the right numbers. 3 to 5 years. Down arrow key. I know you can't see that. Okay, now you can. And then 14 to 17 years. And down arrow key. And 18 to 64 years. Okay, so with that now, we want to come up here and we're going to put in this cell over here. Now, I accidentally moved that chart when I did that, clicked on that, caught that. So I'm going to undo that move, make sure I don't move the chart. And I click there. Be very careful of that because it won't even find the chart if it's not in the right place. And what we want minimum, and I have a heck of a time spelling, minimum hours, then down over key. And then we have 14, 10, oops, I hit the wrong enter here, put space, so I backspace, backspace, backspace. So I need to hit my arrow key instead of the enter key, so a down arrow key would have worked. Anyway, I need 14, 10, down arrow, 8, 7, tab key would move between them too, but it goes right and left. So I check my table, make sure it looks just like the one in the book. Everything looks good. So with this now, I need to come up to design here. We're going to pull down the table design style here. And the one we want to pick is desired style, point to medium style, one accent four. So I come down under the medium. It looks like it's about the medium style, one accent four. Medium style, one accent four. It's under the medium area down here. Okay, so mine looks just like the one in the book. Click the medium style one accent for gallery. Now, click the edge of the table. So we don't want this insertion point. So that's why we're going to click on the edge so we don't have any blinking cursor in there. And now click the borders arrow. So up here in this tab, they're still in design. So there's a borders arrow up here. And yours probably says borders. So it's under shading. Hang on. So mine, I want to make sure, text outline. So they have, let me look here. They show the borders is right here. That's where it is. So this is shady, and this is borders. And yours, if you have a smaller screen, probably. I want to make sure I get the right one. We want all borders. It's the desired choice. 
So they put borders around everything. And click all borders, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now with the table still selected, click the effects button, table tools, design. So this is table tools. I'm in design and I need to find the effects. And it shows us right under borders here. And then I want to go into shadow. And then I want to come down to clear down here. It looks like it's under perspective. So I need to go down further. So I got to scroll down. And it looks like it's this perspective upper left. And that's the choice I want. And upper left is the choice you make. Click chapter left to apply this. Okay, so I'm going to hit save. Mine looks just like the book. So I save when it looks like the book. And what I mean by that is there's a shadow back here, right here on this corner. So that's what the book shows. With the table still select, display table tools layout. So I need to do the layout ribbon. And then click the last cell in the first column, this 18 to 64, so I need to be blinking in there. Place the insertion point in that cell. Click the insert below button, and it tells you it's in rows and columns. When I go across, here's rows and columns, and I want to click this insert below, so I put a new row in. Now, click the new cell under the age column over here. So I click in there, we type 65 plus, and then over here, you need a minimum of seven hours. Since I only slept three hours last night, this is rather humorous. So it's not a good night. Anyway, you will add a column now. So with the insertion point still in the lower right cell seven, that's this one here I just typed, we want to go up and click the insert right button. So I make sure I'm in layout in the rows and columns, insert right. So I put a new column over here to the right. And in here, first one is going to be maximum hours. So I click on the cell. Make sure you're in here blinking. I know you can't see it, but yeah, you want to make sure you're in that cell when you start typing maximum hours. Then I just hit my down arrow key, and it looks like the numbers are 17, 13, 10, 9, oops, asterisk 9, and 8. I'm just checking my numbers twice. Okay, so I have that in there. Once again, when I know I'm right, I always hit save. I haven't screwed anything up. Now we're gonna resize this table. So we're gonna go up to the tables, make sure I have the edge of the table. Whenever it tells me to do anything with the table, I just make sure I have it selected right there. So I click the edge of the table, tools, layout tab. So I'm in the layout here. Here's the height and width. And we want to select this as a four inch height. And the width is 6.5. And I can use my little enter key over on the numeric keypad. Mine looks just like theirs in the textbook. And now I need to align the table. So I need to find the line. And it tells me the table select is in the table tools layout tab arrange group. So this layout tab, I go across till I find the range group. And then I want this line. And I want line center. Are they going to have me align middle? No, that's it. Line center. So just make sure you align it center, centered on the slide. Now to add a slide title. So the slide still needs a title. So with this still displaying, we're going to go in this title placeholder. We're going to type sleep requirements. And it looks like they're just capitalizing the first words requirements. And I make sure I've spelled it right. I just did terrible. To change the text. So once we do that, we'll change this text to Rockwell Now. If I went up here and chose Rockwell Now, it would change all this text. So what I need to do is make sure I have this, this whole thing selected or highlight this text. And you'll see when I go choose Rockwell, the whole text changed. If I would just been blinking in here and I would chose Rockwell, it would just change that one space. So you need to make sure you have this whole thing selected. I just clicked on the edge before I changed Rockwell, and then all the letters changed to Rockwell. Now to insert a text box and format that text. So now we're going to come up here, display the insert tab, click the text box, insert a text group, then position the pointer below the table. So we're going to put a note below the table. doesn't matter whether I have the select or not. I always click off things when I'm inserting new things. Just make sure I don't insert inside there. So anyway, I go up here to insert. And then it tells me text boxes in the text group. So I go find the text group. 
and there's a text box here, and I make sure that's what they want me to click on. Once I click on that, nothing's happened until I click down here, and they tell me to come down here and just click right here, and then click below the table and type source, full colon, national sleep foundation. Okay, so to foundation, and then I know I'm going to have to change it to Rockwell, so I click off this, click back on it, make sure I just click on the edge, because I need to change that to Rockwell. Usually all your text will be the same, that's why, I, let me read this, make sure. So select the text, text box, yeah, and increase the font size to 20, and then, so by selecting it, the box, I've got everything selected there, so when I change this to 20, I could just hit the up text button, but that changes everything in the box. Now, use Smart Guides to align the text box. One thing about Smart Guides is you've got to make sure Smart Guides are turned on, and they always are. So, you know, and there are guides in here, and there's a Show button here where you can make sure that, you know, Guide Settings, if you're doing this at home, you may not see guides. What I'm saying here is when I start moving this around, I should see them red lines pop up. So that's what's called Smart Guides. So we click the outside the the box so use the smart guides to align the text as shown in the figure and what it is I move this around there'll be a red line above it and one through the middle and it looks like it is a black line on the page maybe it is I'm looking for red but it's mine's black so and I have the little arrows so yeah I can't show you but there was a diamond a little red diamond here popped up and two lines over here with the red and the book doesn't show this top one because they're only showing part of the page but when you move this on the edge of this now you'll see it on my screen that these diamonds are popping up and them lines and I make sure when I let go of the mouse I do not move that whatsoever so many of you guys are missing major points for that this is perfect I save this click out here to make sure I don't move anything you know I'm not don't want to move anything around that's kind of bothering me at sleep requirements. They didn't have me centered out, but that's mine looks just like the book. Now, to reuse slides from existing presentation. So now it says go to the home tab, new slide arrow, display the WISP layout gallery. So what they want to do is go over here to home, go to new slide arrow, and now we're going to come down here and reuse slides. So whatever slides I'm going to use. So now I can go to Browse, so it says click Reuse Slides, Whistle layout field, click the Browse button, and necessarily navigate to your data file. So when I go to Browse, that was the download file, so if you're at home, you'll have to go back in here and download. Maybe I should show you how to do that. Let me close this. If you're at home doing this, all you have to do is go back here. If you don't have these, you just click this and just tell it to save these. So just tell it to save the file. And save file. And save file. And now when I go back in my PowerPoint, I can just go to Browse Downloads. And so then we're all put my downloads right here. I have a ton of stuff that, you know, so what we're trying to do, it only brings up the one today. If, you know, and we're looking for PowerPoint. That's why I download three files. The one was moved, but that's this is the one we want, obviously. We say open. Okay. And I better look at the book and make sure, and that's what they show over there. So we click that reuse, click the open button, right click either slide thumbnail, display the reuse slide button. So I know this is a little bit confusing over here, but they say right click either slide thumbnail. So these are thumbnails, I right click, and then I have a choice of inserting one slide or all slides, and they tell me to insert all slides. So both slides will now pop in. And make sure if you did, you had slide one selected, these would maybe go in somewhere else. If they do, you can just move them around. Moving slides around is pretty easy. So yeah, just make sure yours lined up like mine. So these are the, and if you click on three, you'll see that. This is the next one. So yours should look like this. And that's what they show on the next page. So now they tell me to click slide three thumbnail. That's what I've selected. So I'm going to close this box over here. To select it and then drag it to the left of the current slide one as shown in the figure. So what they have is they brought up the slide sorter. The slide sorter is down here. I don't really what that I don't want to explain this. I'll show you with the slide sorter. So they want you to go here slide sorter and they want you to take this and move it over here to slide one. I would have never did that. I would have stayed in my normal view. And I would have just drugged that slide three up to slide one. But anyway, they want you to use the slide sorter, which it is kind of a cool tip if you had a whole bunch of slides. 
Anyway, in your slide sorter, that's down here at the bottom right, should now show this is the first, second, third, and that is your fourth slide. Now, click the slide four thumbnail and then drag it to the right of the new slide. So this fourth one is now going to come number two. So we have one, two, three, four. Now we want to click slide one, and they talk about click the normal view. We have to go back into our normal view. That's down here at the bottom. We click slide one here, and we're going to resize. I click on this to resize, bring up the sizing deal. And when we do that, they want us to just delete this picture out. So I just clicked on the edge, pressed my delete key on my keyboard, and the picture's gone. Now we're going to go insert resize a picture. So with this still displaying, we're going to go up the insert, and we're going to go pictures, and this is going to be from a file, and we're going to go, I put them in downloads, I go to my downloads, and it's the support bed, that's the only one I have, so that's why, and that's what it says in the book. Now once I have it in there, they talk about the size and handles doing all this, but anyway, you're going to go over here and just resize this, and it's going to end up being 7. 11.23 okay and then hit enter now we're going to move this using smart guide so on the edge of this when I start moving this around I want that red line to pop up and I move it over till the one comes center so that shows me that it is perfectly on that slide I get the crosshairs going across you see how that kind of jumped if that happens to you just click on again because you want to make sure, you know, as you move this around, you see them red lines up here. Even though I have the crosshairs, there's red lines going across the top. I want it to be perfectly aligned. What I'm trying to say, right here, I've got a bottom line lined up, but I don't have the top one. So, yeah, I want lines across both, crosshairs across, and that is in the right place. Now we're going to go up and crop the picture down once I get it in the right place. So I come up here to my cropping tool. This is a great tool. And there's corner, side, and usually when you crop a picture, it's always from, you want to keep the aspect ratio, and let me make sure, they're going to do a center drag. And dragging the center cropping handle on the right of the picture inward towards the woman on the left. I'm not a big fan of this, but okay. So they want me to bring this over. It looks like I'm going to come over to just off her hand here. So it says, Crop the edges, so I bring it inward, drag the center cropping handle on the right of the picture inward toward the woman's left hand. Didn't tell me exactly, but that to me looks just about the same size in the book. Now click the crop button again to crop the edges, so that will now cut that off the picture. Once again, I should probably go adjust the picture back in the middle. Let's see what the book's going to have us do. So they don't have us move yet they're going to have us go color the picture so with this still displaying the bed picture selected we're going to go up to our color open up this color saturation and this one happens to be under the color tone so i find the color tone here and it looks like they want me to pick the very first choice in here this is kind of a blue tint now on there now if it's still selected click the artistic effects Effects. And I'm going to go down. It looks like it's going to be this one right here. That means crisscross etching. Crisscross etching. So I click that one. They have you put in different ones. I love this one. I use it all the time. But anyway, we want to make sure you end up with crisscross etching is the choice to apply to that. Now change the picture softness. I have a bunch of corrections. So we have to pull down the corrections box. We have brightness, contrast, sharp, and soften. So up here in the soften area, it's this third choice right now. And how much do they want us to just click the correction picture tool, point to the soften 50% the first choice. So we're going to change this to a soften 50%. It really blurs it out. Anyway, point to various pictures and blah, 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 brush on the picture on slide two, but eventually you're going to go back and end up with that other choice, the first choice that I picked. Now, with the picture still selected, we're going to come up to picture styles. We're going to open our picture styles and the desired one, and they have seven, eight, seven across, and I only have six across. So I'm going to have to be a little careful on this one. It looks like it is seven, seven, twenty, the second one. So this is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I'll point to this one, make sure it's the bevel perspective. So 
double perspective, and that's the way it looks in the book. Now we have to size the picture. So with this picture still selected, we're going to go through and change the sizing box. And it looks like they want to the height of 5.5, start in the height box, 5.5. Click in the width box, and the width there with picture, we're not going to do anything with the width. We're going to leave the width alone. We just did the height. Now we're going to resize this picture. So I come down here and get my move arrow. I'm just going to move this around until I start seeing the crosshairs. I know this is tricky. You just kind of got to go slow to get these crosshairs to pop up. So red line there, red line across. And finally, with this picture still selected, well, this kind of cheesy. Now they're going to have me use the line tool, so I wouldn't have to even go move it. We're going to line to the top, so that's going to clear up the top anyway. So with the picture tool selected, picture tool formats are playing. Click the line button, range group. Oh, let me undo that, make sure I did the right one. So line, yeah, I did it. It's line top. So yeah, they move it up to the top. Oh, where the heck they had me do the well, I guess you now you know at least in the center across this way is why you had to go about that right. Now finally, just so they tell me, click the line top, move the picture to the top edge. Now I display the insert tab, and I'm going to put word art. I like clicking off pictures when I do this. I, he shows he has the picture still selected, ain't going to bother. And I just, I don't know, I just always click off. Anyway, they're going to put word art in here. The one we want is the third A in here, and it looks like it should be gradient fill, olive green, accent color four, gradient fill, olive green, accent color four, outline, olive green, accent color four, yep, that's the right one. And then sleep well tonight, I spell it right. And I do hope I sleep well tonight. I have to, I didn't mean to sleep last night. Now I'm wanted. <laughs> with the word art object still selected. So I'm in there. I want to make sure I have just the word art selected if I'm doing any changes. And then I come up to text effects. So they show in here there's different ones. And the text effect one's this bottom one. It should say text effects when I point at it. And they want me to go down to transform. And then we're going to do a wave down. And that happens to be under the warp area. I come down here. And it is one, two, three, four, fifth one down. One, two, three, four, five. That should be wave down. That's the choice I pick. Anyway, click the wave down, choose various ones. When you get all done, click wave down to apply this text effect. Now click the shape height arrow. And they want me to set this to 1.5. I just click in the box and type 1.5. And then, do they have me do anything yet? The width will be 10. Use my little enter key. And it jumps over to the right. So use the smart guides to push the word art as shown. So when I move this, I want to make sure I'm on the edge with the move handle. And I need to pop up. And it looks like there should be a line right at the top there. And then I move it around until I get the center line. So I have a line right across the top of my letters and a center line going straight up and down. Once again, when you let go of your mouse, make dang sure you don't move this. So I just click one time to make sure, then I click off that to make sure I have the right spot. Anyway, with this still selected, so I should have left it selected, we're going to point to 3D rotation, so under text effect, back to text effect, 3D rotation, and under perspective, second choice, should be perspective above, 3D rotation, point to perspective above, play with other ones, but come back to perspective above. I really can't tell what that did, but anyway, applied it to apply the rotation word art style. Now, with the wisp beam determines the available word art colors. So now we're in change. With the word art still selected, we're going to go to the text fill. That's this top one next to your word art styles. So we have text fill, and we're going to come down and pick this far green, olive green one. I'll darken them up, olive green, accent five, and I'm making sure that's exactly what it says. So olive green, accent five, 
and then if the object still selected click the text outline so this one below should be the text outline and we want to point to dark red which is this one right here and I'll put view and click dark red for the outline now with slide 2 display slide 2 so this is slide 2 select the title text that's this up here necessary display drawing tools so we want to make sure that it's up here we have format I should have it select I'm in there blinking I don't want to be blinking so I want to make sure I just have it selected actually he shows what he does to make sure he highlights it and I guess I should go the way so he highlights everything in there I will know well anyway just that's the way he does it if I identify with the deal but anyway we want to display the drawing tool format word art styles more buttons this is word art styles and this happens to be the more button here and they don't know why he did more because he looks like he's the first choice fill dark red color accent color one shadow and then we choose that so why I did the more button now with art arm still selected press and hold shift and drag the middle size and handle on the right side of the box inward as shown so what he's saying is we go over here and I haven't pressed shift yet so when I hold down shift and so I have my shift key and I select this and drag it inward and I'm going to bring it in until I push the exposure to light downward what the shift key does keeps me from making it smaller dragging downward it keeps it square I guess what I want to say but anyway once I get to where I want you know how far it is and he shows this red line pops up so it lines it right with that picture box below I let go of my mouse and then let go of my shift key so you want to make sure there was a red line that popped up if you have that messed up just hold down your shift key come over this double headed and yeah you'll see that red line pops up there you let go of your mouse stop moving your mouse and I know for some of that's kind of hard so if your mouse doesn't move and let go of the shift key now with this word art on slide 2 still selected click animations on the ribbon display the animations tab so I click this animations tab and I want to click the float in the animations tab group so this is here and I want to pick float from here so I'm going to have to look at more button so he shows it's right across the top I should have been able to find it and it's float in here I guess maybe I didn't have to hit that click off that float in. yeah I guess I didn't have to hit the more button it's right there you'll see that floats in going up and we pick the direction and he says display the live preview and then now we're going to do the effects button to change which way this comes in and he's going to have us pick float down so over here we have effects options we're going to pick float down and this will come down from the top of your slide so mine looks exactly like the textbook at this point i come up and hit save and everything's perfect right here now with the start arrow tab time you display the start menu so over here and on your final have these start on click don't do automation we're going to see with previous and that this one we're going to choose with previous um, the animations you can do it's just when you through the slides you know instead of having automated timing through the slides I'd rather be able to click on the reason I say that is because every computer how fast the computer is how fast that will go anyway with the preview button we can see how that will look up here the preview button's right up here at the top we'll see how fast that comes down and it comes in so if you want to preview something just hit preview and it'll show you the animation coming in now with the duration up arrow so they want to see this one second they want to make this a two second duration so all i did was type two and hit enter and now if i hit preview it'll come slower down it's a two second please don't make your stuff move too slow because i'm trying to look at it when i'm creating but anyway click any bulleted list so this is our bulleted list i just want to be on the edge of it make sure i have the whole list selected and now we're going to do a fade entrance on this so we click the fade we're going to set the time over here so i just click in there and type two hit my little enter key 
and then I'll preview that. We'll see how these come in. So this comes down, and then these will come one, fade in, two fade in. I personally think two seconds is a little slow, but it's just how much effect you want. Now, speaking of that, we can change the effects options button, display the effects options. So at the end of this, here's effects options. And we can have this, you know, as all as once for five paragraphs. So he shows that in there. And we want this all at once. So they'll all fade in at the same time. So instead of, yeah. So that's a little better for two seconds, we'll each one. So I make sure we click all at once. We hit the preview. All these both the lists come at the same time. So when I see this appear, hopefully they all appear at the same time. Save. Now we're going to add media. So we're going to insert video. With side two still displaying, click the insert video. So in here, we need to make sure on the insert video, there's pictures, online pictures, and this is the insert video. We go click this, and we're going to get it from a file. So we're going to go to browse. I download my stuff in downloads. You saw me do that. So I can go to downloads, and I'll have this movie in there. So I put that, insert it, and there's a little video there. Anyway, I put that into the slide, and there's a little play pause button down here. You can see that I'll let it play while looking at what he's going to do with it. And he's going to have us change the size of this video so we can stop at any time. It doesn't look to me like he does much. He just, oh, the guy does move. Well, there you go. Anyway, we pause that. We're going to go up here and redo the size of the actual video, and it looks like he's going to have 3.3 in the height. He tells you to hit the up button. I'm just going to type 3.3 and hit my enter key. And now we're going to bring this and line this. I have to have the move arrow. And we make sure we get this top. And I'm moving around until, yeah, that line up above your pops in right there. And the red line's right along the right edge over there. See that? So I let it go. Now with the video clip selected, we're going to go ahead and do some corrections. So over here we have corrections. And he's going to have us come clear down to the bottom choice of brightness so we can see it. So he wants to go to a 40 plus 40 plus 40. It's the bottom right one. Actually, now we see the guy which is way too dark. And now with this still the select, the playback tab. So with this selected, there's a playback tab up here. So you have to have the video to have this. Now what we're going to do is choose to do automatically. So up in the video tool playback video options group so i come across the video options group i pull this down and i want it automatically so it'll just start playing automatically as after the other stuff comes in anyway they have you hit the play button to see if you want to see how this works and you'll just see the video is going to play from where i paused it before anyway now we're going to add a transition to this video so we're going to apply ripple transition so to do this it says final hamsters will make presentation play ripple so apply ripple transition in the exciting category transitions tab so i have to have transitions tab in the transitions to the slide group so transition slide group here and I want to apply the ripple so i come across i'm looking for ripple if i don't see it then i'll hit the down arrow key so let me read this a little bit. So in the exciting category, so that's down here, exciting, looking for ripple. And you would think they'd put these in alphabetical order. Here it is, ripple. And you'll see the ripple effect came from slide one. Apply the ripple transition to this slide group to all four slides in the presentation. So to do this, I have to hit apply to all. So don't miss this step, otherwise it won't apply to all. Now to run the slideshow, sorry, I just dropped the receiver for this mic. Hopefully I'm still recording. Anyway, click start on the beginning, quick access toolbar. So we want to go home. Actually, let me go back with this. So on the quick access toolbar up here, this is click from start. First, I'm going to save this. And so we click this button up here, and we can see the effects as we go through. And I'm clicking my mouse to speed it up. Yours will probably play a lot slower, but I just click my mouse to speed stuff up. I'm going to play the whole video. And you can press the space bar to end the slide, you know, wherever we want to get to. Every time I click the mouse, it goes to the next slide. When we get to the end here, I just keep clicking my mouse. But we could have pressed the space bar to get to the exit of the slides to show. Then we would save the presentation, which I just did, but I'll save it again to make sure. And that is it. So I just saved that.
close it right back out here continue go to upload this I'm going to go in and I save that in the K drive I'm in my folder I put it in a PowerPoint chapter 3 go to upload submit big score big score no whammies so we'll see what my score is for this a few reports open that PowerPoint and be the last slide in there once it opens oh what final grade so something's wrong let's see what we're calling 92 well that sucks let's see what the, the picture should be 5.5 .5. I'm gonna enable editing what they're saying on this picture 5.5 it should be 5.5 .5. and this one will have don't mark me wrong it is 5.5 .5 high and so, but it's not in the right place. So the picture should be positioned left corner, blah, 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 position to zero from the top, which I have a position, and on slide one through four, the transition should play for three seconds. So I missed my transitions. So when I come in here, if I go back into transitions, and I look at my transitions, was this ripple effect, and I guess I missed that where I was supposed to set three seconds. So I'll change that, and I need to go change it in my PowerPoint. So I'd open mine up, change that three, this picture is not in the right spot though and that's why it should be positioned to the top zero from the top of the slide so when we move this around that red line i obviously had a little too high in the red line one there so let me open mine up really fast and make sure those changes so i go into where i just did mine over on another screen and i open mine back up and so when i click this picture yeah, I don't have red lines, so I need to move this. I missed, so I make sure. So I got the red lines lined up across. I go in my transitions, and I'll make sure it's the ripple. And I was supposed to set that duration. I think, let me pull up the grade one. I think it said three seconds. So transition should play, so duration is three seconds. So I go back into mine, and don't get confused about which one you're adding. You change that to three seconds. I'm going to save that really fast. I'm going to close this. Now, 92 would have been 10. So if you get anywhere, you know, I'm not going to save my report. Go right back here, close this, restart it. So that was today's assignment textbook project. Hit start. Upload. Should stay right in my folder. I closed mine and saved it for sure. Oops, I grabbed that already. I just need to come down here to submit. New report. If I get a bad score, please plug your ears. I'm not really, I haven't slept, so I just have a lot of mistakes. It's hard to concentrate, and I fully understand what's going on. It still tore me up. So, you know, on this one, just go ahead and submit. I come down here, whatever score. It did not fix it. Something in there I didn't like. It took my position out, 3.5. That is weird. So when you go in here, it may not be the picture. So the picture should be 5.5. And I'm not going to spend the time to try to figure out what I did wrong. I think probably what I did wrong, to be honest with you, is when I clicked this picture and they led me and went to height, I probably didn't put a five, period five. I might have a comma in there. Who knows? You know, at this point, boy, if that's off the wrong side, but I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to submit my score, like I said, at this point. And so hopefully you'll have better luck than I did. That is it for that one.